<laughs> Look what I just got. This was on my front steps. Yes, I heard the truck backing up, you know, doing that beep, beep, beep thing. And I was like, I must have gotten a delivery. Thought it was going to be something from Amazon, and it was not. It was something from a UPS truck that brought me a SIA. Thank you, Bryce. Thank you, Bryce, for hooking me up with this, my first box. And I can't wait to try it out and document the whole experience here. Hello, everybody. As you saw from that video that played before this, Miss Angie Tillman, the fickle chickle, got her a SIA in. Have you taken it yet today, Angie? I haven't taken it today. I took it last night, which I wasn't supposed to do. And I did end up staying up like longer than usual. Like I think you've mentioned before, <laughs> like it's not yeah, a good I idea take, for I people like me to take one. it at night. Yeah. I take my last one like four because yeah. <laughs> and I am like, literally my hair is out of control. I mean, it's not bad. Your hair. I mean, look, I mean, it's like, I was like staring at the zoom waiting for you. And I was like, this is crazy. Like, when, so when I was a little girl, I think I've told this story before, my hair was so freaking thick when I was a little kid and it was long. My mother would have to put conditioner in my hair, braid my hair in the bath, and then leave the conditioner in just so she could get out and brush it without me crying because it hurt so bad. It's going back to that, which I'm not complaining. Like, this is not a, a bad issue to have. But if you see, a Catherine and Edwards and I just filmed, and we were both, like, playing with our hair before filming because it's, like, it just, it's, like, I mean, I'm not complaining. It means that we're young and healthy, but that's the ASEA guys. And they, they told me, yeah. they did tell me this would happen. And I didn't take them seriously because I already have thick hair. So I was like, whatever. But holy shit. Holy shit. It's amazing. And I cannot wait. I know, Angie, you're going to be kind of vlogging your journey, right? On your channel. Yeah, of course I am. I love to share all my selfies. <laughs> all over town. Right. So yeah, I'm today, actually, I'm going to get my hair color. You know, I color my own hair. My hair is really in bad shape. Like, I know it probably looks fabulous on here, but in real life, it's really dry, brittle, gross, and thin. You know, I had a whole lot of hair fall out a couple of years ago. And so, um, I mean, I, I do a good job of, you know, making it look television ready, <laughs> esoteric Atlanta ready. But no, in real life, it, it's, it's like straw. And um, so I'm excited about this. And so I'm going to color my hair today. So I'm starting like fresh, have fresh roots, everything fresh, starting on my ASEA. And I'm going to document the whole thing. Well, I will tell you, I just, so I've been doing it now for like two months. And I just in the past couple of weeks started to notice how crazy my hair, how crazy fast my hair was growing. I know people have been commenting and in the comment section, they're saying it's starting to look really healthy, which I agree, it, it does. does feel healthier. Um, and so that's just your hair and your nails are usually a pretty good indicator of your, um, of your bodily, your health. Now, Angie, I'm, you're, you got a lot of Vata too. So you- My nails are really dry and gross that's and they Vata. used to be so hard. They used to be so healthy that I could barely clip them with clippers. They were so oh, wow. thick and now they're just falling apart. Yeah, and that's the Vata thing as well. So I have Kappa hair anyway. That's the one, like the one thing I have that's Kappa. But your Vata, your your you'll it'll be interesting because that's something when you start to see your hair change, that's when you know your body is like really performing at its optimal health. And you mm -hmm. guys, Angie, I just spoke to the powers that be. We're gonna get you a commercial, all that kind of stuff. So Angie, mm -hmm. you're gonna be able to go through Angie as well if you would like, um, like to try this product. So she will be, you'll be able to. She, we're getting her all set up now for her to be kind of sponsored by Asia as well. And you know, I know Angie, uh, you are the fickle chickle as well, which we're gonna talk about. So she has other. I'll go ahead and show you guys her website because I just think this story we're gonna tell today is so hysterical, and so um. Again, I'm on my laptop, so it's really old, so it's not pulling the pictures up. But I'm going to put Angie's website to Fickle Chickles, Chickle Fickles, Fickle Chickle, Chickle Chickle Fickle. I can't speak today. That's a tongue twister. I'm going to put that down in the description box below. And I'm sure Angie will be able to put a lot of the ASEA stuff on here as well um, when she's ready to. And, um, yeah, because you can put it, like, you can put the ASEA in your garden as well. Like, if you're gardening, you can put ASEA, like, spray of the ASEA onto the, the food, too. To I'm thinking of using it with my orchid. I yeah. have lots of orchids and I pride myself on getting them to constantly rebloom. People that, you know, you get give somebody a gift of an orchid and then 
it's beautiful when they first get it and then they just throw it out because they can't get it to rebloom again. A lot of times people give me those dead orchids, those dormant orchids, and I always bring them back. So I'm, I'm really excited to to play around with this on the you get to revitalize. I'm so excited. And y'all, you know, I, one thing I appreciate about, appreciate about Angie so much is her sense of humor. And the one thing I know when the first times we filmed together, I, I think I'd labeled it the savage ladies of the South, because that is one thing about Southern women is Southern women will curse you out with a smile on their face and pearls on. And you don't even know they just cursed you out. They do it in such a sly way. It's, it's, and there's a, there's a, there's a sense of humor amongst women of the south and so what we're gonna do today guys listen I, we were on the phone this morning angie and i was like are we in a haunted house like are we in one flew over the cuckoo's nest because it just seems like everywhere we turn in our com our community there's like all these cults popping up like all of a sudden everyone thinks they're the leader and <laughs> i'm like we are just as delusional as the people on the other side who can't figure out which restroom to use. We'll just say it that way. Like this it's is like a really fun house with mirrors everywhere. And you're just like, just bumping into yourself everywhere. Cause also, you know, in this community, I feel like, wow, I was really taken for a ride too. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it's not just other people that make the mistake of, you know, following someone, following another leader somewhere, you know, getting kind of sidetracked. It's like you drank the Kool-Aid, then you just went <laughs> <laughs> like you spit it out again. I know I was talking, I was like, Angie, are we like literally in an insane asylum? Like, are we the souls that got sent to a hospital, a planetary hospital? Is this one flew over the cuckoo's nest? Because I am just like, it is to the point where it is comical. The stuff people are saying, the stuff people are believing, and this is why for months now leading up to this, I've been like, y'all do your own work because you're going to be taken for a ride. If you don't know how to stand in your own power, you're going to be taken for a ride. The um, Acturian um, anthology talks about how we were created to be a slave race by the Anunnaki, so we have it in our DNA to get duped. Into, into following a cult leader. Um, I had another video we were going to air with uh, Eric today, but um, that that audio got messed up. So we're going to have to refilm it and go back over the bite model again because some people need reminding. We don't want another Waco happening. And I have a feeling in my bones that another Waco is going to be happening with some of these like sub channels of these of this there yeah. are more cults in the truth or community than there are in the normies. Like, let's just, I mean, yep. judge not least ye be judged. Oh, but by the grace of God, go I, we have no right to be judging our friends who are normies because Lord have mercy. But anyway, we were laughing hysterically this morning and I was like, I am just, you know what, Angie, let's, since the, the video that was going to be aired today had to get scrapped because of audio, this is going to be actually aired on Friday. We were going to air that on Thursday, but, Got, scheduling got messed up because of that audio. I thought you told me, I don't know even how this came up on the phone, Angie. I don't know wow. how the hell this came up on the phone. We have titled this episode, Jail and Jesus. Because we're going to do this. We're going to say, we're going to ask you watching right now to take a little bit of a break from the, the um, YouTube world and the, the Telegram world and come with us. To story time. I, I can't believe I'm sharing this story. Well, Angie's going to tell you about the time that she got arrested. <laughs> story time featuring Miss Angie. <laughs> now, the funny thing is about this, and you said this later on. Well, let's just, I'm just going to, you know, I don't know if mo many people know this about you, Angie, but you're a little bit of a celebrity. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm infamous in some some social circles. I'm infamous, which means famous for a bad reason. It was one of my favorite vocabulary words in 11th grade for some reason. It's just, I've held on to it. So I'm kind of infamous. I'm famous for a bad reason. And then sometimes I'm famous for a good reason, you know, you like chickle. So you feel chickle. You've, 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 but, you know, business. you've been in all these magazines with this biz this business. You know, you I've been a cover girl. You've been a cover girl. That's that's the, the I know you haven't seen the thumbnail, Angie, but I've got you in your, your curlers where you've signed the picture <laughs> and it says jail and Jesus. So it's all hysterical that this blonde southern 
you know, upper middle class lady got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> but she got arrested as the fickle chickle. I when, did. And you were telling the cops all about, but I'm a fickle chickle. <laughs> So I was, I was like peeing myself the whole time that you were telling me this story last night. I was peeing myself. I was laughing so hard. And I was like, Angie, we have got, you've got to come on and do a story time on my channel. I just want all you guys to take a break for a little bit moment. Laugh with us as Angie tells her story about the time she was in a holding cell with a woman with sparkles. Sparkles. <laughs> sparkles. Oh, and she, you know, I've got this lamp over here that's a unicorn. She, I remember she had a tattoo of a unicorn on her, like, hip. She showed it to me. Um, <laughs> in the holding cell. <laughs> in the holding cell. But let's backtrack. All right, let's backtrack. December 28th. I don't really remember what year it was, but I do think that my youngest child, who it will be 17 th this year, I believe she was, like, two <laughs> so 15 years ago we're talking the land of flip phones because when you said you had your flip phone uh-huh she may have been yeah two or three she had to have been two or three because i'd already started the pickle business so it had to be it had to be after 2008 i mean or maybe it was 2008 i don't know 2008 was a crazy year Real crazy. It was. It, I, I would. I would be interested to go and look yeah. at the um, <laughs> the astrology of of that time. So Angie, I was just pulling up some pictures. I'm going to show you the picture I just pulled up, so we can set the scene. Uh oh. Imagine. <laughs> it's 2008. Angela. Yes, Tillman here. Yes, number three. I actually parked right outside the front door of Belk at the Georgia Square Mall in Athens, Georgia. Belk for our friends who are, are not from America. Belk is a department store. It used to be a rather a rather um, popular department store. Um, that's how I kind of see Belk, like in the I mall. Been in there since I haven't been in there since whatever year this was, because. Uh uh. So the Georgia Mall. It's what's the Georgia Mall? Georgia Square Mall. Georgia Square Mall. Yeah, Athens, Georgia, down there. Mm -hmm. I think I've driven. Is this it? Yeah, I think I've driven by this mall. Yeah, many times. So it's December twenty eighth, right after Christmas. Yes, I had a purse full of Christmas money. And I was meeting a friend. I was planning on meeting a friend for dinner. I think we were going to go meet it on the border, have us some Mexican food right up the road. And uh, I mother stopped of three the again. mall first. You've got a, a toddler. You're a mom yeah. of three. Mom of three. And I stopped off at the mall. I still remember what I was wearing. Blue jeans, little sweater, like mauve. <laughs> Terrible color on me. <laughs> and stop off at the mall. I park at Belk. I walk in and I go over to my favorite section. It used to be my favorite section. It had all those clothes like Lucky Brand. And I just remember that section was my section, you know, and they had um, dressing rooms right there at that section, kind of in the middle of the store, little kiosk -y kind of place. And I'm in, I've, I wanted a new sweater to wear, you know, to, to dinner with my friend. And I'm in this dressing room and I keep going in and out of the dressing room. And I have this bright idea that I'll just get one of the tank tops off the rack and I'll just put on a tank top instead of having to put my clothes back on all the way. I can just walk out with this tank top and go back and forth and grab different sizes. And I'm going back and forth. Well, y'all, I'm on the phone talking with my friend, telling her I'm on my way. I'll be out there in a minute. You know, I'll be down the road in a minute. I left that tank top on by accident. And put my clothes, my sweater back on, you know, went and purchased a pair of jeans, Citizens of Humanity or whatever they're called. I, you know, expensive jeans. Um, what else? I got a sweater, a couple other things. I even went over after I purchased all this stuff, went over and checked out the shoes for a while. Tried them on, didn't buy any shoes. But then right when I, I walked out into the mall, like the center of the mall, when I crossed that threshold, 
somebody pulled my arm, <laughs> like grabbed me by my arm right here and pulled me backwards. I was like, oh, like, I don't know what I thought. I don't, I didn't think anything because I didn't really realize I had done anything. She pulls, this woman pulls me into this little room. It's like a little closet they have. So I've got like the inside scoop. So they've got this little closet and it's just like only two people can fit in it. I'm sitting and she's sitting like face to face. And she's like, you have one phone call. And I'm like, what, what is going on? She's like, I'm showing her what's in my bag. I'm showing her my receipts. Like I've paid for this stuff. And she's like, what's on under the sweater? I went, and it hit me. It did hit me. I felt all hot. You know, my face, I'm sure just turned red. I start like <gasps> shaking and I'm like, oh my God, I left that tank top on that I was using to walk in and out of the drape. And it, it was either like, like honest, it was like, what, $6? Like, honestly? Yeah, I think it was like $6. So anyway, I get arrested for this. So I call my husband. He says, I remember, I still remember what he said. He was like, oh, sweetie. That's the only words I remember. And then he said he would just take care of everything, I guess. So, and that's it. That's all I, you know, got to talk to him, let him know. It took forever. Like the cops come and get me. They walk me all through the ball. <laughs> <laughs> they walk you through the ball with your handcuffs. <laughs> And they drive me. They, they they pull up a car in front of like a back door of Belk, the way I remember it. Put me in there. Then they drive around to the front of the mall, the front, like right. Look like a walk of shame for a six dollar tank top. Yeah. So picture like the front entrance of the mall. It's right after Christmas. You know, people love those after Christmas. And they're specials. turning. Mm -hmm. They're spending their gift cards. And so. Right, just so people watching this know, right to the right of the entrance of the mall is this door. And it's the same color from what I remember, the same color as the, you know, the stucco on the outside of the mall. You don't notice this door. It has no markings. They park out in the parking lot. They don't drive right up to the curb. They park out in the parking lot. Tell me I've got to go like, get booked or something. And they, <laughs> they walk me across the parking lot, across where people are coming through, like in their cars. I saw someone I know. I'm not going to mention the name right now. I saw one of my husband's friends driving a car, like dropping off his daughter. Like, like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Anyway, they take me inside. There are all these really nice cops in there. They're all sitting around just eating like, you know, Cheetos and stuff. Christmas and cookies, the Christmas popcorn tin. Yeah. 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 And I sit down with them and I'm really, they're like uh, busted at Belk. I mean, it just, it was like such a normal thing. Like they're used to it all the time. They're like busted at Belk. And I was like, I, I guess, like, I, I don't know what, and I start talking to them just like, like we're just hanging out. I'm like, y'all know, like I am not a thief. I am I not. It was an accident. I didn't <laughs> mean to. Do I look like somebody who steals? Yes. <laughs> I'm a pickle chickle. I'm like, my purse is full of money. I just got a bunch of Christmas money. Like I am not. And I just have all the, I purchased all this stuff in this bag. You know, they're laughing. We're talking about pickles, like my pickles. A couple of the cops had had them before. Like we're just hanging out. Then I'm thinking that's it. Like, I'm really clueless about how this stuff works. I'm thinking that's it. I'm thinking any minute now, they're probably just going to say, all right, you know, like, Give us the money. <laughs> yeah. fine, no harm, no foul. Totally uh, fine. Nope. So the car pulls back up and um, they take me to the door and I don't have to walk all the way across the parking lot this time. I just, they just put me right on in and there's this girl in there. Big girl. And rough, rough. And she's got, you know, she's sitting on her hands and I'm, I'm in there sitting on my hands. <laughs> we all handcuffed. And she's telling me her whole story. She goes, 
I got arrested at Bells again, you know, and I sell to Bells. I'm like, what's Bells? They so carry my pickles Bells. in. I told my boyfriend this. My boyfriend's very familiar <laughs> with Athens. And I was like, yeah, she was in the holding cell with this woman named Sparkles who stole tan tampons from Bells. He was like, Bells? I was like, because he knows Athens. That's like a grocery store, right? Yes. And, and I'm telling her, I'm like, oh, Bells carries my pickles. <laughs> you know? And I'm thinking, I probably could talk to the guy who saw her on the camera because he's like my husband's friend. They play golf all the time together. Like I'm, he's <laughs> get her off too. You and Sparkles are going to get off on your shoplifting charges. But she did tell me that she's been arrested at Bells a lot. She told me that she's always, but I'm thinking it's tampons. After this whole story, I, I really wanted to take her a bunch of tampons. I really wanted to take her like all kinds of stuff and drop them off at her house. But um, she told me her address too. I forgot about that. I need to go down there and see if I can. Anyway, that's another thing. But anyway, <laughs> so they take us over to the east side of Athens and there's a big, you know, big sheriff's office thing over there in we go in and I've got to have fingerprints and all this stuff. But, you know, I thought this was interesting. They had her take off all her jewelry, but I got to keep mine on. I had earrings. They did my picture from the front from the side. Okay, Angie, I looked for your mugshot this morning. Just <gasps> I didn't find it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you know, I mean, I had all my jewelry. And At least I look good, girl. At least I look good. Mm -hmm. But and there was the, a, a creepy um the guy doing the fingerprints. Like hers went really fast. I think they've taken hers so many times. They're like, hey, Sparkles, what's up, girl? Yeah. Then he's trying to do mine, and he kept holding my hand and caressing it, and all this, and saying it wasn't working. It took forever. And there, I remember there was another um <laughs> man over here sitting waiting for his fingerprints to be taken. I don't know what he had done, but he, I remember him saying that ain't right. What they're doing to you right now. <laughs> that ain't right. I said, it doesn't feel right. He goes, you know, the bad thing is the sad thing is ain't nothing you can do. Ain't nothing you can do. They got you where they want you and nobody can see it. I'll, I'll never forget that. Mm -hmm. It just gave me chills, but it was a terrible, terrible feeling very very vulnerable and like him this officer like hold you know behind me and like holding like uh my hand and trying to do the fingerprints and he said it just never never worked they knew that i wasn't a criminal you know oh, for one you were a mom you were a mom you were a wealthy <laughs> mom they knew that you you don't look like you've been living on the streets still in tampons they they obviously knew that this was a mistake like you uh -huh. didn't go spend probably hundreds of dollars on sweaters and jeans and then not buy a six dollar tank top. Right. Most of your jewelry is probably real. Like they, they, they. But as that guy said, they got you where they want you, right? Yeah. This is why I'd be a bad security officer, a police officer. I'd be like, oh, you know what? I see what happened. Just, just go pay uh -huh. for the tank top. It's fine. It's fine. Just go pay for it. It's fine. Yeah. That would be me too. Well. Then they put me in this holding cell with Sparkle, the girl that I was in the in the uh, back of the car with. And there's just from the way I remember it, it was just this room. It was cinder blocks. The door had a window on it with bars so the cop could see in at us. And um, there was a concrete bench on one end. And then it was sort of like you're in a vault. <laughs> And meanwhile, your friend's still sitting it on the border, drinking her margaritas, going, where's Andy? Yeah, I never called her. I never called her. I mean, I couldn't. You only got one phone call on your flip phone. <laughs> so when you walked into this vault, right to the right, there was this toilet. And there was no sink, no mirror. <laughs> And there was this concrete bench on the other end, a sparkle sitting over there. And she says, they said they're going to bring us some food soon. I'm like, <gasps> like, I don't care. I was supposed to be eating nachos and margaritas. And now I'm sitting in jail in a holding cell with someone named Sparkle with a unicorn on her thigh. <laughs> 
which I'm, I like unicorns and I, I'm, I'm fine with tattoos, but there's just the whole, like the visual, I mean, everything I remember from this. So they did eventually bring us food and it was like trays, the divided trays. And I remember there was like ham and llama beans and a slice of bread. I can't remember everything else, but I mean, applesauce probably. And, um, <laughs> And so I'm holding it in my lap. I'm not touching it. You know, I'm like, I'm not, there's no way I can eat right right now. Sparkle eats all her food. And then she says, are you going to eat that? And I was like, no, I'm not. She goes, well, can I have it? Because I know I'm going in tonight. And this was so sad to me too. I remember her saying, because there's not going to be anybody to come pick me up. And so, you know, bail me out or whatever. And she was like, but you, I bet you're going to get to go home. And um, so anyway, that was the head. <laughs> yeah. But so cool. she did. She grabbed my tray, ate all of it. And then she went over to that toilet. <laughs> <laughs> she took, she took was, a shit? She took a shit. <laughs> <sighs> I'm so glad this story is getting documented in such a, such a really fun way. Well, I mean, it wasn't smelly. I mean, what did you look at her? Like, did you look oh, at her? Oh, that's, or? that's nothing. There were, there was feces on the <laughs> ceiling dripping down. So apparently like inmates were, you know, in the holding cell, they'll, they'll just like shit and like throw it up there and it's dripping down. I, I was like sitting in the corner, like, <laughs> like just please. Please don't fall on me. You know, eating food in a room covered with feces, <laughs> and you were supposed to be at a nice little Mexican restaurant drinking margaritas, eating pea chips and salsa. We were probably gonna just talk about like all that forced family fun we just had to endure with you know at Christmas. I mean, it was gonna be good girl talk. Instead, I'm in this cell with, anyway, with Sparkle. Now you're having a girl, a girl talk with Sparkle as she takes a dump. <laughs> she didn't, they, she's been in there so many times. It was just nothing to her. Right. Nothing. Um, and then eventually we get to talk and, you know, she's, she's talking about how I'm going to probably get to go home. And, you know, it is, it feels like forever. I think I was in there for probably about like three hours. Yeah, I can imagine it's probably a lot of bureaucracy and paperwork and uh -huh. yeah. I'm sure they don't rush to get it done. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, they took her on back to like the real jail and I'm still sitting in there. And I keep thinking that some nice officer is going to open the door and say, are you okay? Or <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Finally, one of them comes and gets me. Well, I, well, I haven't told the other part of the story. Oh, the Jesus part? The Jesus part. So before Sparkle gets taken back, she's telling me about how, you know, she's been in so many times that she's just got, she was actually looking forward to having some good food. Like they'll feed her. I know. And she told me if I did end up going back, like going to where she was going to be that I was going to be eaten alive. Like she said. <laughs> Thanks, Sparkle. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Did she tell him why she was mid shit? She said, you're going to be eaten alive. They're going to love you in there. And I was terrified. Like, what does that mean? Are they, I mean, are they going to like have sex with me or are they going to like beat me up or like, I didn't know like eating a lot. Okay. They're going to beat me up. They're going to like, Gang, gang up on me like orange is a new black and or or like I mean I don't know you know like I didn't know I was terrified but anyway she starts talking about her boyfriend and how he doesn't really love her she wishes that she had somebody that really loved her and I said well you do sparkle Jesus <laughs> Yeah, I told her all about Jesus and um, and uh, we hugged and she cried and she thanked me for giving her hope. And um, that's I don't remember everything about that. But, you know, that's 
that's what she got from it. She got chills in and she, um, they took her on back and that was the last I ever heard of sparkle. But, um, and then they, you know, they take me finally out to another cell that's clean though. It's the last one you go to, um, for release. Right, yeah. Right outside that door is a, is another desk with an officer and behind him, behind his desk is a door to the outside. And my husband was apparently outside that door for hours. Mm -hmm. And um, he kept asking, because I think there's a little window that he can talk to them. <laughs> and he said he could kind of see me through there and that I was just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> freezing. It was so cold. It was so cold. So I don't know where I'm going with this story, except for every time, um, my children, as they became old enough for me to drop them off at the mall with friends, I mean, they just knew I was going to tell all their friends part of this story. I'd be like, y'all, don't go to Belk. But also, y'all know you're with a group of friends. They're watching. If one of y'all is bad, something. if you one of y'all pockets something, y'all are all guilty. You're all guilty. And mm -mm, let me tell you what can happen. You might end up at home cell with Sparkle. Well, yeah. weren't you then banned for Belks for like two yeah, was after a fact? Because this <laughs> is what made me laugh so hard, you guys. Yeah, well, I have to go. I go to court. My attorney says um, that it would just be best if I pled guilty instead of going to trial because then they were going to put my picture in the paper and everything. And... <laughs> And she's the fickle chickle, y'all. Like, she's already famous. Famous. Famous in Athens, Georgia. I really can't go to the grocery store. I mean, I'm my daughter, my youngest, just got her license two days ago. And I'm like, yes, I never have to go to the grocery store again because she can just go for me because it's I just can't get through the grocery store because I'm so famous. But anyway, <laughs> no, she really, I'm going to try to pull up and put it in the editing process magazine people know that i'm joking like it's not it, it's but you you really you're not just some like obscure <laughs> housewife in athens like you are known and at you people know who you've been in magazines you you don't downplay your success girl like you've been extremely successful with your Listen to this. one time i was in knoxville tennessee the only time i've ever even been there making a delivery and i opened the door my husband is carting in a whole you know hand truck full of boxes of pickles into the store and this man that worked for hgtv i've never been on hgtv but anyway i still know his name art carmichael he's awesome dude well he's sitting over there and he turns around and this is somebody that at this store it was also a like a deli there was a sandwich on the board that was named after him it said the art carmichael you could order that sandwich so from one thing so he turns around and he goes, fickle chickle like that. I'd never even been in Knoxville before. Like, I'm telling you guys, like, <laughs> she is on, like, you've sent me some media stuff before for videos like this. Y'all, that's the picture I used for the thumbnail was one of her media junctions with the curlers and you're blowing. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So, so that's the thing. It's like, not only was her picture going to be in the paper and in a small Southern town, you get that paper. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Right next to the wedding announcements. Yep. Obituaries, wedding announcement, and then busted at Belk. <laughs> so he says I should plead guilty. So you're standing you there before the judge. And meanwhile, you know, there are other people in there that I know, you know, um, I remember seeing like faces and just like, what in the world? Well, the judge gives me, I can't remember if it was six months or a year probation. And <laughs> I have to write an Wait, essay. Well, this is what you said. You said, oh yeah, one time I had to write an essay about how my $6 tank top affected the world. And I was yes. like, who did you write that essay for? And you're like, my probation officer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Y'all, I love to write, so I actually enjoyed the writing process. <laughs> but and it and I, you know, and I had to write it as if I was really guilty, and I had to write about how 
my actions in the mall that day affected the community and the world. And dollar tank top. Yes. I had to write all about this and I was really proud of my work. <laughs> and I remember going to um, the probation officer. I had to meet, I guess every, every week I had to go in there. Um, I don't remember everything that I had to do with the probation officer, but I remember this, that this time I was turning in my essay. She took that, ripped it up and threw it in the trash. She didn't even read it. Didn't even save it, set it aside. It was like showing me like, fuck, you know, like, like you don't matter. Like, oh, all that. I mean, so I'm a strong person, but you know, for these people who really like have been dealt with some really bad cards in life, like sparkle. Yeah. Like sparkle to go through this and all and never get like, like help, you know, or support. So anyway, yes. I also have to do community service and I, um, my attorney, he knew where to go because my attorney is a cyclist, a bicyclist. And he was like, you should go and do bike Athens. It's just a great, um, charity here in Athens, it's called bike Athens. And what it is, is people donate old bicycles to this place. And then, the guys at Bike Athens, usually it's somebody that got a DUI or like whatever the community started. I was in there with all these men late night in a warehouse, you know, and I think I had to go like twice a week. And I, I chose that because you know, a lot of people do, I guess, because you can do it after work. So you can still yeah. have your job and then and then go in after work. Um and I would go in and I was the only girl in there. I remember the first time I walked in there, they all looked at me like, what in the world is just walking in, you know, like <laughs> and they're like, yeah, but I learned how to like take old brake wires off a bicycle, re-brake it like with new stuff, paint it, like make sure all the gears are working. Yep. Then I'd go out in the parking lot and test drive it. I'd say it's ready to go to the homeless shelter. And, you know, <laughs> I actually enjoyed it. And I made friends at that place. I'm still buddies with the guys who um, started that, that charity. Well, but, I can um, imagine a lot of DUI people are probably sometimes, not all the time, but people who are typically not in the system, you know, yeah. so there's probably a lot of co common ground there. Uh -huh. And so you end up with a misdemeanor because you never stolen anything before, which is what's so I, freaking crazy to me. Like if a judge is sitting there seeing a, a woman who has three children, she's never done this before it's it's a six dollar obviously hearing the story that i thought of the judge i've been like this is a waste of taxpayers money just yeah. go on like this just go pay the six dollars like stop wasting taxpayers yeah. money but the way that you were telling me this i mean i was laughing i know it was traumatic for you at the time <laughs> but the fact that you can laugh about it now and just talk about the experience i mean my friend's daughter got arrested a few weeks ago downtown, you know, just being kids. I don't know what it was. Maybe she's too young to drink or something. I, I don't really yeah, know. They're, that's like. big in Athens because of the university. They, they pop yeah. up there a lot for being underage. Yeah. yeah. And I was telling her, I was like, oh, when, when, when she's ready, I'll tell her my story. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> we can compare. <laughs> Listen, not many people can say they've had a probation officer. Yeah. So yeah. What did y'all tell your kids? What did they, what did your husband, what did y'all tell your kids when all this happened? I don't think we told them anything. I think, um, they're so seven, young. Eight, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, my oldest was like old enough, like to be home, you know, they were all asleep. So I don't think they ever knew, you know, that dad left and came back with me in the car. I, I, I don't, I don't think they ever knew. You didn't use the mugshot as a Christmas card for the following year. <sighs> I kind of do wish I could find it somewhere though. I looked it up. It's, I can't find it. So uh -uh. I think that it's just me to be such an old case and like, you're not, you're not a criminal. So <laughs> that's all I was worried about. I could do all this other stuff. Like I was going to put the work in, talk about super ch shadow work. Yeah. <laughs> I could put the work in. I could do all that. Just don't put my picture in the paper. <laughs> That's what I would be 
worried about too. But here in Atlanta, it doesn't really matter because there's so many. I don't even the Atlanta Journal Constitution. I haven't looked at that paper in years, wow. so I don't even you know. And we got one of the biggest. We got Rice Street Jail here in Atlanta, which um they've done wow. documentaries on because it's so violent. So listen, they got so many gangs going on that I don't think people would even notice if some like a you know someone like me was in you know. But it that is that. But in a smaller town, yeah. That mugshot, like, Ooh. and you just, I mean, it was, it's like you, they felt it like you had gone in there planning to steal this tank top. Like it was mm -hmm. a premeditated. Yeah. No. And that's just not all I had to do. I also had to take a class. I had to meet, I think it was once a week for six weeks at some, I forgot the name of the place. It's on, it's on Tallahassee Road, y'all. But I had to meet there. I saw other people I knew in there. I saw real estate agents. We were all in the class together. Do you what know? What was the class for? Um, we had to learn how not to be thieves. <laughs> <laughs> we had to tell our stories. It was like a support group. Um, and I, else I remember whenever it got around to me, I felt terrible for even saying that I was not guilty, like because all the other people in there had really done something. You know, one of the ladies in there, a real estate agent, she's in her pictures all over the billboards around here. She um, she did. She she like stole a bunch of stuff at Belk. She was from Belk, too. Yeah, she was busted at Belk, too. <laughs> Mm -hmm. like she went in there to steal yes like she actually well, no no she told me this true story i forgot about this she told me that she was waiting in line and they were taking too long and she needed to go so she just walked out yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not all about that and i remember her telling me that like it was just nothing and i'm going you didn't drop the stuff and walk out. You oh, walk out why couldn't you just say, "Hey, can I leave this and come back in uh, in the morning and get it?" Oh, you know, like did she at least say, "I'll send you a check." Like what? I mean, <laughs> she thinks she she's left. Sometimes common sense ain't so common. Like your in your issue was a complete accident. Like could literally happen to anyone. Which is why I tell the story all the time. I've told it to lot everybody that <laughs> you know wants to hear it. It's it's funny, but it's also very eye-opening, too. Yeah, about how quick they are. You have to be very careful. Uh -huh. I mean, literally, this could have happened to anyone. Like, I'm sitting here thinking, like, how many times? I mean, I don't go to the mall that much anymore. Everything we order is pretty much online now. But, like, how many times was I? You know, I, I lived in Los Angeles during this time. And I remember the flip phones, you know. And, like, how many times was I at the Beverly Center on my phone? Uh -huh. Before texting was really big, like, on my phone trying on clothes this could have easily happened to me easily easily yeah but you know so it's such an easy mistake to make but i just the whole setup for the story with sparkle with the unicorn with jesus because that was like when the last thing she told me oh she's like oh by the way this is before i woke up i actually witnessed to her about jesus and then you're like <laughs> just start laughing like <laughs> she did say it gave her hope yeah so. I mean, I think the fact, here's the thing, Angie, too. I think, I don't think it was actually the Jesus story that gave her hope. I think it was you. Yeah. I just said I would talk to her, that I would, that I would, I hugged her, you know, I, I told her that she was going to be okay, that, you know, that I understood, you know, like stealing tampons. Yeah. That's real sad. Cause yeah. Yeah. That's, um, I know with the Mysore Foundation, we've done that a lot. Um, we've done some work here in Atlanta as well. And we'll put like tampons soap deodorant toothpaste toothbrush and baggies and we'll just go drop a box of them off at like places where homeless people live mm -hmm. just for them to be able to take put granola bars in there bottles of water stuff like that because that's that's when you know we can laugh about your situation because you're fine you're going to be fine you know if, if something like that happened to me it would be okay right like mm -hmm. we have family we have access to attorneys we you know but with someone like sparkle I mean, just the fact that she had a boyfriend and she was sitting there saying, oh, no one's going to come get me tonight. Yeah. Like, that's heartbreaking. That is. Because um, I know if something happened to me, there would be a line of people that could yep. come and get me. And that would. And that would drop 
I can say with all certainty, hands down, there would be a line of people that would drop everything they would do and come and get, including my own family, Mm -hmm. come and get me out and not leave until they, like your husband would sit out there for hours until I was, I was safe. I mean, so, you know, and and so I think in that moment, it was really you that was giving her that hope. Right. I see that now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you were somebody from obviously from a very different socioeconomic Mm -hmm. background, someone you wouldn't, you probably would never have crossed paths with. with Yeah. I told my husband that night, I said, I was supposed to be there. I was supposed to be there for this woman. Yeah. I felt like there was a reason, a bigger reason that I was there. Um, now that's that's probably that's a, that actually probably is very true because that one impression you made on her has probably stuck with her and gave her hope that hum- humanity isn't you know because uh, our, our environment is definitely what shapes our perspective of life and mm-hmm. I can imagine growing up in an environment of, of probably very low income without any family that would you know stand up for you or or you know, that you could definitely rely on, um, even her boyfriend. Yeah. Like even her boyfriend. Yeah. I was laughing on the show with Jay. I did where I always say, you know, I, I, nowadays we don't really know phone numbers cause it's all on our phones. You just hit the name and it calls them. And there's only two phone numbers I know by heart. Now that's my mom's phone number, her cell phone. Cause she's had it forever. Um, and then Jay's because of a CS, so I was laughing with Jay. Like if my mom doesn't pick up, you're the only number I know. <laughs> Now, you know, <laughs> and he was like, well, but I've been to bail you out of jail. I was like, well, then just call my boyfriend, you know, to come it's get true. It. Whenever I was uh, with my daughter getting her license and, you know, we had to fill out the forms and put her phone number because now you do everything virtually. Like I rode in the car with her and they just put a camera in the car and tell us where to go. Really? That was odd, too. That's weird. Yeah. But they said they had to have her phone number and my phone number to have a number to call. And, I don't know. And. I said, wait, I don't know my daughter's phone number. <laughs> right, I don't just say, let me get my phone and look it up, you know, because because when she got her phone, you know, I immediately put her contact in my phone. It just says Rosie. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I that's I mean, we were kids back in the like we talked about the Hillis back in the 80s and 90s and 70s. I knew all of my friends landline number by heart. I knew because you had to know it by heart. People had address books with numbers written in it. Yeah. But yeah. I just, I mean, how how old do you think Sparkle would be now if she's still alive? I say that because her, obviously her lifestyle is pretty rough. So I would imagine she was probably like 20, 22 then. So she's in her mid thirties now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I would love to see where she is now. Yeah. Is I don't it- know. I don't know if that's her real name. Probably not. It might, yeah. I mean, it sounds like I kind of got the impression that she was a, a maybe works the streets. I yeah. don't know for sure, but that's just kind of like the vibe I got, which you yeah. know, got to do to survive in this world. But, um, and that's sad to have heard that before with people that actually prefer to be in jail. Yeah. That she seemed like she did. She said she was going to get to eat really good and that she'd been there so many times she knew how to deal with those girls back there, <laughs> you know, but that I was going to get eaten alive. <laughs> I mean, I laugh about it, but it's sad too. It's so sad. We should try um, to find her, Angie. I'll go with you. It makes me want to do something at Bell's too. So there are different Bell's locations all over. They own like six different, I want to say locations. And, but this particular one is in an area where a lot of crime happens and, um, you know, a lot of lower income uh, housing around and kind of just, just spark something in me. I kind of want to, spark <laughs> do maybe a cart or something at the bells there that has just um donated items for sparkle mm-hmm. yeah, i wonder I if we could do like a fundraiser to raise money to like create baskets to leave there for people mm-hmm. like go buy their products and then leave mm-hmm. let us know guys watching in the comment section below like if that's something you'd be interested in because, I mean, we've done that with the Mysore Foundation before where we just put, put a bunch of, like, necessities um, yeah. for people. Like, you know, like, like the, and I said with the Mysore Foundation, that's the one thing I started doing. But the first donations I started making in India was for women's hygiene products um, in the slums. And, you know, I, I mean, I know this sounds gross, but, like, as a woman, if I were in the situation where I had was so poverty stricken, 
I would sacrifice tampons and maxi pads. I would just roll toilet paper in my panty. I think like, yeah. if it came between that and like food, mm-hmm. you know, especially if there are children involved, you know, um, you, that's kind of one of the things that you would sacrifice because you can just use toilet paper. You can go to public bathroom right. and wrap, you know, mm-hmm. that's gross, but you know, there are ways to work around. I think all us girls have been there, <laughs> you know, when you weren't you prepared. You don't have any tampons on mm-hmm. you or... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, um, that's really, I mean, that's heartbreaking, but at least it's a funny story. And I, I honestly, I do feel like Angie, it wasn't Jesus that gave her the hope. It was you that you were willing to like be your friend in that moment and not judge her. I mean, I'm honestly, worried about her after I left. I really worried about her. Like what happened with her? I wonder how long she was there. It's Cause you you're know, a, real, a real person with a soul. I you read, know? I read by her, uh, the street that she lives or lived on at the time so many times, just wondering which house, you know, was hers. So. Do you remember the exact address? No. Mm-mm. I mean, if you want, I know it's probably it a dangerous neighborhood. Not really. No. I mean, but- I'll go knock door to door with you. If, if you mm-hmm. want me to, I'll, we can make a day of it if you want and see if we can find mm-hmm. her and see, I mean, I don't mind. Um, I would think she would remember. I think she would yeah. remember. She probably didn't see girls like you <laughs> too often sitting in the Holden cell. You know, and imagine that. Like, imagine all these years later, because what, it's been like 15 years, 15 years mm-hmm. later, this person who was really nice to you, like, not shows up at your door just wanting to see if you were okay. Mm-hmm. Like, imagine that, that what that would do to somebody's um, essence as a person that probably hasn't received a lot of genuine love in yeah. their life. And um, all of a sudden, 15 years later, you she's been on your mind and you just want to make sure she's okay. That that would make such an impact like mm-hmm. on her, on anyone really, you know, I'll come, we'll do it. Yeah. If you want me to, I'll come down there. Well, yeah, I have to do this now. <laughs> I mean, if you, I mean, if you want to do it by yourself, that's fine too, but I'll do it. No, I'm you. just saying like, yeah, like I'm like now this, this is exactly, you know, a, a, another reason why it happened. And so, yeah. Yeah, now Sparkle's famous. <laughs> if we can get her to come on the shows. <laughs> Show us her, uni- her unicorn tattoo. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, that's no, I, I, I'm, that's, it's just so emotional. I know it's a funny story, but it's also like that, that um, it, it makes you, you know, we all, we all have things we work on in life and we all have struggles we go through and dark times we go through. But when you hear stories like that, it does really put it into perspective. Yeah, how blessed you are to actually have Angie. I can bail you out of jail again if you needed me to. I'm only okay. half away. <laughs> I can bail you, bail you out. Tattoo I filmed number. the whole. I have my camera filming the whole time, but no. <laughs> people know I'm always going to be filming something too. I, I mean, I record people. The other day, I haven't shared this on my YouTube yet, but it's a really cute, cute little, um, little segment of my life. The other day, after brunch, Sunday brunch, I decided I was just going to drive around the normal town area of Athens and just look at stuff. And I had my windows down and I saw some kids like pay, playing an instrument out in the grass, you know, a girl laying on her back grounding. And I stopped the car and I've got my, of course, got my phone already videoing without their consent. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm we like, can hey, can I talk to y'all for a second? <laughs> is this your garden? No. Anyway, I'm like, what is that? Anyway, I, and I do this whole little story with them and I learn about this instrument that came from Morocco and, you know, all that. Yeah, I was yeah. like, yeah. And the kid was like, he goes, I said, thank you so much for sharing a little piece of your day with us. He goes, that's the way it is over here in Boulevard. And it was just such a good, like, you can't make this stuff up. It just was real life. Um, you know, his name is Kieran. And he's so cool. And then my daughter that lives up in New York now, she's like, mom, I think I know them. (laughs) Well, that's what it's like here um, in Atlanta. There's an an area called Cabbage Town in Atlanta. Um, And that to me is it's close to where AYA is. But it's an old area of Atlanta where they have. um, It's where they had a uh, what's a a factory. That's the word I'm looking for. Factory. In fact, it was a factory area. And so all the houses are cut cookie cutter the same but at this point um it's become a very eclectic art artistic that's how this area is and the reason what i told these kids 
was uh, it was a day I think I told you I was going to go to North Georgia up to War Woman and I was going to go to a little festival. Well, the friend I was going with backed out that day. She didn't feel well. So we didn't go. And so I was telling them, I was like, well, you know, I was going to an art festival, but there's art right here in my own backyard in Athens, Georgia, and I'm going to start documenting it. And, you know, so yeah. you know, and Athens own- is super eclectic like that. Yeah. Athens has a lot. I mean, that's where, for those that don't know, that's where the University of Georgia is. I know we've done deep dives into Athens before. Mm-hmm. Um, University of Georgia is a huge university here in the United States. And but they've also got you know, like a a lot of big bands have come out of Athens, like the B-52s. So Love Shack, um, that song, that's, they're, they're from Athens. Um, R.E.M., huge band uh, that actually they still live in Athens, I believe. I know know where Michael Stipe's house is. Well, my, (laughs) the guy who does my opening song, Josh McKay. So my opening song for us, he lives in Athens and he was in the band Deer Hunter. I think he's friends with, so, my boyfriend has been to a party and at Michael Sipe's party in Athens okay. with Josh, the guy who did. And before people start conspiracies, there's no conspiracies here. It was just a normal party. <laughs> but Tony Collette was there as well. And she was topless dancing on a bar. That was the okay. most dangerous thing happening at that party. Sounds yeah, wonderful. It was, yeah, it was one. It was, no, there was nothing. No, there's no, you know, dirty shit going on. It was just a regular party in Athens, right? Yeah. So there's a lot. And there's even what is isn't Collective Soul? Are they from Athens too? Or are they from Atlanta? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I of I Montreal. There is a band called of Montreal. Um, yes, they're from Athens. They were big uh, back in the early two thousands, I believe. They even in LA, they were really big. But they're from Athens, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're called of Montreal because I believe the lead singer's girlfriend was from Montreal. And so that's why they named the band of okay. Montreal. And so, but they're from. We Africa. have like drive-by truckers, which Jason Isbell was part of, and then he branched off and won all these Grammys, and you know, on his own. Um, that all got started in Athens too. Um, a lot of a lot of um, bands. A lot, of big mu- a lot of big music in yeah. Athens. A lot of art artists at Flournoy Holmes. That's where he got his start. Um, mm-hmm who is a friend of mine here in Atlanta. He's an older gentleman, but he is the person who did the cup. He has a lot of uh, artwork for, for musicians. Like Al- he did the Alban brothers eat a peach um, yeah. album, very famous album cover. He, he did that. And he does a lot of work for widespread panic for their, um, I think he's actually famous for naming some of their accidentally naming some of their albums. Like he'd say something and they'd be like, yeah, and that'd be the name of the, you know, that story too. Don't you about me about widespread panic? You've told me. Do you want to tell it again? Okay. First, so I was a bank teller and um, (laughs) John Bell of Widespread Panic asked me to go out with him. And I made up a story. I made up an excuse of why I couldn't probably. I don't know what I told him. And so the first date with my husband, we go to Harry Bissett's New Orleans bar you know we walk through we've got reservations to go upstairs we walk through and there on the night that i was supposed that john bell had asked me out he's sitting at a two-top table which i would have been sitting at you know (laughs) and we walk right past him and i'm like oh what was more embarrassing that or walking handcuffed through the mall actually the john bell (laughs) i could have been a rocker's wife (laughs) <laughs> I imagine like that's one of those things like in a, somewhere in, an, in a parallel universe, you're with him. It was a totally different life. <laughs> like imagine, you know, I think about that sometimes. Like what if I had stayed with Sir Nexus? Yeah. Like where would I be? Would I be on YouTube right now? Like how these little yeah. choices create a reality that, you yeah. know, who knows, you know? So Ooh, those dates I went on from people I met at that bank. Ooh. I- yeah, it's a lot of. Well, I've I've had so much fun with this, Angie. I'm going to ask our audience: Do you guys want us to do more story times? <laughs> I could probably think of some stuff. Oh, I was going to do. So I was thinking: There's so much. Ma- there's so much. You know, when you're a, a public, which is so crazy, y'all. We I do these meetings with the ASEA people, and they always call me an influencer. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm always like, "You're a public figure." I'm like, I'm a little too old. Like, isn't that a 22 year old dream? 
I mm -hmm. did not ever, but yeah, but I think people do have this when you have a public platform, people do think they know you, but there's little quirks about people that, that, that maybe you don't know. And so I was, I was watching something the other night. I was like, I should do this with my guest and I'll do it with myself. Angie, what is one thing besides the fact that you, you have a rap sheet, besides the fact that you've been <laughs> arrested and had a probation officer, what's one other thing that would surprise people to know about you? Um, it's just kind of a weird thing Okay, that, I, that on my bedside table, I keep a little ramekin, a little dish full of ice cream salt, you know, the kind of rock salt that you use to churn ice cream. Yeah. And that I like, I suck on that at night when I go to sleep, <laughs> I eat salt. awesome that is awesome is it i don't know if that's the first thing that came to my mind i'm sure there are a lot of other things but that's well, like i'll keep asking every time i do a show i'll tell you one of mine that people might not know about me in my 20s when i lived in los angeles i dated a man who would play poker once a week and i didn't know how to play poker so he taught me how to play poker i won every time you won every I'm time kick ass poker player really i'm taking you to cherokee when I we go up to lake burton we're gonna take a, a trip up so, to cherokee i haven't played in a while but i was watching something on tv the other night and they were playing poker and i looked at my boyfriend i was like i ever told you that i kick ass in poker like i have the i have such a bad liar in life like i you can read my emotions but for some reason with poker and i don't know if it was in that situation that i was the only girl and i was in my mid-20s and these dudes were like, you know, you know yeah. bro, bro, like, and so we would play and I won every time. Like, I wow. think they just underestimated me. I don't know. Maybe it was an under, they underestimated me, but I'm really good at poker. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And my parents did not teach me that. No. They did not teach us that at vacation Bible school, nor at the junior cotillion. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that on the mean streets of LA. So I think I'm going to start doing that, asking my guests to, to say something that people would, would be shocked to know about them. Yeah. So Angie sucks salt at night. <laughs> sucks salt. It's so delicious. <laughs> I used to carry it in a little Ziploc bag with me and, to school. Like I remember fifth grade having like a Ziploc bag full of salt. Like, well, I, you know, I, some people have just like peppermints in there. Purse. <laughs> Angie's, Angie's got salt. When she's a grandma oh. one day, she's going to be the grandma that's giving her grandbaby salt. Salt. Oh. Wait, is it, isn't that a thing though? Like salt keeps evil spirits away or something? Yeah, that might be just okay. something intuitive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. All right. Okay, guys. So next going forward, I'll have to remember, I have to leave myself in. I'll be asking my guests what's something I felt, shoot, I filmed with Catherine this morning and I'll, I'll ask her next week. What's one thing that people would be shocked to know about you? I've got more on my sleeve, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a pretty badass poker player. Angie has a rap sheet and sucks salt. So... <laughs> And she was almost a, rock, a rocker's wife. <laughs> so, all right, you guys, I tell you what. So if you guys enjoyed this, again, I, I think I want to move forward with doing, we'll keep the deep dives and stuff, but occasionally doing a story time as well, just for us to be able to, what's that? Oh, the cabbage patch. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. So when we're able to, I, I, Angie and I want to go up to the cabbage patch factory. Is that what it's called? Like Cabbage Patch Hospital or something they've got there in Cleveland, Georgia. Yeah, we're we're planning on doing that and doing a deep dive into the Cabbage Patch Kids and all that kind of stuff. But I, I also would like to, because that's part, I mean, that's a good, I mean, my dad, listen, my dad's family is hysterical. They always find humor and stories like the one that Angie just told. That's one thing I really like about the Watson side of my family is that they have a really wicked sense of humor. They always had a wicked sense of humor. So, um they laugh about everything. And so that's one thing I appreciated about this story because you were telling me last night, Angie, and you were just laughing and I was laughing. I almost peed my pants. My mom doesn't even know this story. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought about that. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. At least you look cute in your mugshot, honey. At least, at least you look cute I'm in your mugshot. Jewelry. <laughs> Got your jewelry on, had your makeup done. At least you look cute. Even Sparkle knew that you weren't, you weren't from around these parts. <laughs> So, all right, you guys, if you want to add in for the fun, you can always share your stories down in the comment section below as well. Or if you want to add, a, add an interesting comment. And what is something about you 
that no one knows a quirk about you that no one knows. All right, you guys, all of Angie's leaks will also be down in the description box below. Make sure you go check out Angie's channel if you have not already. Please check out her website, fickles.com. And I know we had said this on the video that got messed up that we're going to have to reshoot, but is there still a discount code going on, Angie? Yes, yes it's Bryce, B-R-I-C-E, all uppercase letters, 20% off at checkout. Awesome, you guys. I... Angie's all products are amazing. So, and also you can, you can ask inquire with Angie about a C and L too. So, all right, you guys, we love you all have a very wonderful weekend ahead. Don't go getting arrested. And if you do get arrested, just remember it. So you can tell it as a funny story later. <laughs> Bye everybody.